Thank you. Hello. Uh, welcome to Making a Difference on Twitch. Thank you so much for coming. Um, it's about cultivating and maintaining a politically active audience. And we have some really awesome people here to uh, speak about the subject. So if we would like to start at the end there and tell us a bit about yourselves. Uh, yeah, hey, I, uh, I'm Elusive Fox. I do uh, politics in the morning on Twitch, uh, probably about the past three years or so. Um, and that's about it. I know all these uh, folks and, you know, want to sit down and talk about politics for a little while. I'm Carter. Uh, I originally did music and then I got kind of politically active because I saw that a lot of people at their platform don't do a lot in music and I just decided one day that Twitch was a good platform and I kind of stopped producing music on stream and I started talking about the news and current events and things that I found important. So, I'm Frogan. Um, I do mostly just chatting. In terms of politics, I focus on the public health realm of things. I'm Denims. I do politics in the morning as well and reacts, commentary, that kind of stuff. Right on, right on. Well, our first question is um, it's about mental health. How do you manage your mental health and well-being um, covering content that is can be polarizing? Want to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's, uh, it's difficult because you always have people telling you that what you're doing is wrong or that mm -hmm. what you're saying is the wrong thing, and they've been told one way for their whole life. It's really hard, especially politically, because politics is in everything we do. Mm -hmm. Somebody who tells you, you know, I don't want to be political or I'm not political often is unaware that their life is very political and everything. It's in your bedroom. It's in your bathroom. It's, uh, it's here. It's everywhere that you do. So to me, like a good mental health is like I have to remind myself that everyone comes from like a different thing. It's like all uh, realizing that we all came up differently and that we have to remember like this person saying this might not know like what they're saying is like maybe bad or wrong or leads to bad things. So just m mindfulness, I guess. Yeah. And I want to add as well, like, I think because uh, so much about politics is like your community, like if you grow up in a rural town that's like mostly conservative, like that's your entire community, that's your entire life. And so it can be really hard for someone to be like, hey, maybe some of these ideas aren't so good. Maybe we can have different ideas. And it feels like an attack on your character more than just an attack on like positions you have. And I think that can be damaging. And you have to like constantly remember to like keep your, I don't want to say ego in check, but make sure that you know that like you're separating yourself from positions that you should hold that are good, that are beneficial to everyone. What about you, Morgan? Public health, right? So that's, like a, that's a big topic <laughs> the last two yeah. years. It's a good focus um, for you. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I've been like pretty doomer in terms of like global health and public health news, especially with like the COVID response, for example, mm -hmm. um, and seeing the community response to like basic like uh, COVID measures. So, I mean, I'm pretty doomer on all things public health. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I guess there, for me, I focus on, like, the positive global health news, like research discoveries and stuff in terms of, like, policy uh, progression as well. Yeah, I think there's something to be said for that when you're talking about, like, being pretty doomer because uh, I think this... I think we've been talking largely about, like, how you deal with these uh, discussions on stream, but even off stream, like, I think this really can... Uh, obviously, all streaming can affect like uh, how you like manifest like mental health, but absolutely like talking about politics every day, and then you're kind of ingrained in talking about like what you're going to be uh, doing for the next day, looking things up, researching, etc. Oh, so yeah. I think like it's it's huge to kind of like take a step back sometimes, find like hobbies and things to kind of like take your mind off of what will otherwise be just constantly being a news troll. Yeah, yeah I, to go back to like the original question, like I get on, I stream. And then I get off and I try not to touch any politics because mm -hmm. yeah. I, you need things away from the politics. You yeah. just, you need them. You can't just focus, spend your entire life doing it. Right. Is that, is that difficult to step away and kind of put yourself back in like a, well, now I'm not working. So you're separating yeah. work from politics, I guess. I it's feel tough. Like, I feel like it's so hard because once you get to a certain point of like political coverage, you realize that like everything is political. So there's always like that thing like, oh, well. You're relating everything back to like something political in a sense, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's like you can't really turn it off. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. always kind of saying something or you're thinking in the back of your head, like, how does this, like, how is this political or whatever? Why is yeah. this the way that it is? Sure. Uh, the, I think as a, like a political streamer, you ha you can't do like the, 
12 hour streams of just news unless it's like obviously a <laughs> oh, very God, big no. event <laughs> yeah. oh my like, gosh, yeah. it's yeah, impossible yeah. like listen oh, you'll you, you would go crazy so often like I, I find myself like there's a wall that you hit most days mm -hmm. like we all know what the news cycle is right like every yeah. few hours they reset and they go through and they'll say the same thing so i find like you can make it about if you're a political streamer if you're streaming politics anybody here every day like you make it about three or four hours at least mm -hmm. that's what i do same. and then it's like and then i move on to something that's a little less but then i still have like maybe I could tie that into what I was doing earlier today. And that's kind of like a, a good way to keep mental is like realizing like I could do something else on my stream and still be who I am, you know, yeah. political or whatever. Cool. I also like to mix in like this idea. I've all, uh, my, my mods call it like a roller coaster mentality of like, obviously we'll talk about like one heady like subject matter, like, you know, obviously mm -hmm. abortion's been a topic all over the summer. Uh, we'll talk about that and then try to reset, you know, and like bring back up the mood and talk about something like frivolous for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we get into the next topic and again, like reset so people can kind of like, not just myself, but obviously like people who are watching too have kind of a break from, you know, the, the tense situations that we're talking about. Yeah. Sure. It's like a mental, mental refresher mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, speaking of the news cycle, is it something that you find yourself like constantly monitoring? Are you like, I've got to, I've got to stay informed? Are you pressured? Uh, it can be a problem for sure, especially when there's a lot of things happening at once. Obviously, this has been a pretty like eventful uh, summer in the way of so many different things, like the Dobbs decision happening, you know, uh, m multiple different uh, political situations occurring. So it's it's hard sometimes to kind of like I know uh, for a couple of us like using uh, Twitter and everything is a good way to like stay on top of things and also like talking about like different things that are happening. So it's, it gets hard to unplug from like Twitter and say like, okay, I'm gonna set this aside for a couple of hours and just not scroll and grab like different information. Yeah, I think also like when you're, it feels like the days that you step away from your computer, you're like, I'm gonna go touch grass. I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna yeah. do stuff. <laughs> Uh, have fun, hang out mm -hmm. with friends, family, and then like that's the day that all this new stuff yeah. happens. True, like, every time. Yeah, and you're like, you wake like, up and it's like, hey, Dank Brandon is trending because yeah, yeah, this. It's like, okay, got it, got it. Anything else I should know? Yeah, like literally yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I think a big thing is uh, like what you do on your stream. I think a really good way to do your stream is showing how you become informed. My whole stream started like I wasn't very political. Like I was, like I said, I wanted to talk about politics, but I wasn't mm -hmm. informed. So I use my stream as like having chat to be like, well, this is like an article that's interesting. And yeah. like I would learn with Bounce my community. Off. Like everything was learning together. Like I, I was making opinions based on like what they were sending me or like what I was reading or like we would just like watch like big long documentary style content in the beginning yeah. of like how to like or about new current subjects or whatever. I just stay informed with my stream because I find that to be the most like organic way to grow together. We learn together, we, sure. we know. And I can have people be like, this is wrong. It's like, okay, you can understand where my information might be skewed. Sure. Mm -hmm. Also, if I can add on to that, like I think uh, as like a political streamer, I think there's like a very big chat sentiment of like, who's this schmuck? Why do they know more than me about <laughs> politics? Mm -hmm. And I think when you approach it from like, hey, let's all learn about this thing together. None of us know about like what's happening maybe in like Afghanistan. So let's all learn about it together. I think mm -hmm. like that's a much better approach because you get to learn about the topic. Everyone else gets to learn about the topic. I think it's like much better than like trying to make your stream like a lecture or something. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so yeah. yeah. So is that a process? You were talking about that actually where how do you gather information? How do you do you take it just from chat or are you like this is a specific place I go or? I have a couple of different like sourcing uh, play. Obviously, I talked about like the Twitter scroll earlier. I also have like multiple points in uh, both my mod and my regular Discord where people can submit. Uh, I also like randomly uh, or pretty regularly run through like uh, you know either both opinion and like uh, regular pieces in Washington Post, etc. Just kind of like it really depends on like the weight of the news for the day. If something's happening, like you know. Uh, like like for the entire like two weeks like post jobs I think like it was just very easy to consume like entire streams talking about just that but if you know there's like slower news cycles obviously like touching on uh, different you know places and wells of information to kind of like uh, fill up the time that you are going to be talking about politics on stream um, I'm subscribed to a global health news uh, email list it compiles articles literature of emerging global health and public health news every day. So mm -hmm. I go through that uh, whenever I talk about public health um, and policy. Um, yeah. I tend to do like three things before I go live on stream. 
I have something called NextGen. It's like, I think the technical term is like it's an RSS feed. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just pulls from like basically every major news source that I trust that is low on biases and uh, it just pulls things daily. I, I like open it up every morning right before I stream and I see like maybe 20 new things and I just like go over them. I see like what, what is like worthwhile to talk about, what's not. And then after that, I usually go to like the Twitter explore page, see what's trending because sometimes that'll be like social issues that aren't covered in major news cycles. Mm -hmm. And then I just go to the YouTube homepage and then... <laughs> see what's on there. So that's, yeah. that's what I do. Yeah. I have a different Same. process than all of you. I just, oh, I start stream and I wait for chat to go, did you hear about this? <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's what I wait for. That's as soon as someone says, did you hear about this? I know I'm going to, I just heard about it. You're right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to look into it. And then you just say, get stick bugged. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Every I, time. I will say I have a holdover from back before I was a political streamer when I just did video games and everything. And I had an hour of like just chatting to begin with. So I will say I do source a lot of uh, people will be like, hey, this just happened. And it's like, oh good, because I didn't, I didn't wake up and check the news. So I didn't have any of that. So I will like grab things like out of chat, like, oh yeah, cool. We'll talk about that in 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I find it that like chat always like, there's a cause you have like a, it's a conglomerate, it's a hive mind. So these people yeah. come in and say, did you hear about this? And I usually like that instead of like grabbing articles. I rarely ever like I, I click on stuff from people that I like know or whatever trusted communities or if, like one of you guys came by my chat. But most of the time it's like, did you hear about this? And then you go through and you like like you said like find like an opinion article or find like a YouTube video about mm -hmm. it, whatever, and then just try to understand it as best as you can, you know? Because some things like especially with like last year, like we had like the invasion, you know, of Ukraine, mm -hmm. and finding stuff about that, like there was a lot of people that that had no idea about any sure. of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so hearing about that and then like having to find all these different things and like even to this day it's extremely hard to like go about anything that isn't there especially being like a chat that's mainly like my chat is all mainly americans right mm -hmm. so it's really hard to get like an informed opinion on things like yeah. that so same thing happening with iran as well yeah, yeah the iran so, thing is, is very tough right now that's like yeah. the most current one yeah yep. yeah so with there being like a lot of misinformation um <laughs> this is actually a couple of questions here so how do you ensure that what you're getting is is accurate right this one's the hardest you yeah, just have to I'm admit sure when you're tough, wrong yeah yeah when you're wrong you just say i made a mistake let's let's go back today but that doesn't matter people are going to clip you out of context people are going to assume that your first take is the your take that you always believe no matter what it doesn't matter like anybody mm -hmm. who says otherwise is lying like you're going to say something and it's going to be wrong everyone here is if you're a streamer, everyone is going to say something wrong and everyone's going to clip you. And that will be your take until the end of time <laughs> for people yeah. who don't know you. But sure. anybody who knows you is, is going to probably give you the time of day. And sometimes those clips can be people who will come in to tell you you're wrong and, get, and end up a viewer of yours, right? Mm -hmm. And understand where you're coming from or at least make an attempt to. Yeah. So that I, the integrity is something just being able to own up to it. Sure. I just try to always be right, so I think it's really important. <laughs> um, no, I think, I think there's also, like, this is always a continuing dialogue, right? So I don't, uh, I think there's integrity uh, in, like, you delivering, like, your honest, like, opinions of these, uh, these things. But I also sure. think it, like, because we're on a platform that's not just the streamer and also, like, engages with chat, I think there's always continuing dialogues on things. Like, I've definitely had discussions in the past where I've come back, like, later and been like, actually, chat, uh, uh, we've got new information on these things, and I think uh, we were a little off base on that. You know, I think that's uh, important as well. So, as you said, like people will definitely like clip things out of context and believe like whatever they have to believe. But I think the the biggest thing about trying to maintain integrity is just to continue evolving like conversations that have happened mm -hmm. and being you know willing to say oh, uh, maybe I was a little rough on that. Yeah. Yeah, having a strong fundamental is super yeah. important. Yeah, sure. That's like the, the integrity is like you as a person. Like mm -hmm. as a person, are you willing to say I messed up? Like right. that's, that's the thing. Like there's no new, every news is bias. There's mm -hmm. no such thing as non-biased news. Yeah, sure. It's uh, being aware of your biases that's the most important. Yeah. Sure. I try to say that like I, um, I try to find something that is positive for the left being reported by like a right wing news organization. So mm -hmm. like if Fox is covering something and that's showing the left in a positive way, well, it's probably going to be true because why would the right give more power to the left and vice versa? Mm -hmm. And then outside of that, trying to just find sources that are low on bias rates. And then outside of that, trying to only talk about things that I feel really comfortable about. And if I ever talk about things that I don't feel comfortable about, 
I basically always couch it in, hey, um, you know, maybe I don't know that much about, for example, this trans issue. So like if anyone in chat wants to inform me, please do, because I'm always open to learning, changing my mind, changing my position. Like there are life experiences that I don't have. And if people in the chat have them and they can send me articles or information, like I'm happy to always learn. And I think you have to have like the mindset of, this is what I think now, mm -hmm. but I'm always open to change my mind yeah. and always open to change my position if I'm just completely wrong about this. Yeah. So I think like Morgan has it the easiest. Morgan has it the easiest. Yeah. yeah. I'm always right. That's so. true. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is. Also, reading data, right? Like yeah. that's one thing as a, as like somebody who covers like public health. Yeah, I was gonna say like Carter and I like both of our like degrees are like relative to like understanding like literature yeah data uh, yeah data. data analysis yeah um so when it comes to interpreting it like outside of how others would i guess we have that like strong suit um so but yours is more what i would mean is like uh, your integrity comes from the fact that you're like citing studies yeah i use, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah like all my whenever, whenever i talk about anything especially relative to public health it's always backed by data oh um, yeah i think this one's another one like you should always try and find primary sources Mm -hmm. uh, secondary sources are so bad on the internet. Like straight up, like blog posts will show up. Like yeah. first result on Google. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's it's insane. Uh, so like, if you can find a study, read the study. It'll be hard, and it'll be more dense. It's worth it. Um, or like, if you see like a company talking about their financials, just download their financials. It's, mm -hmm. If it's a publicly traded company, it's out there, and you can read it directly from there instead of reading it from someone else mm -hmm. or from some other blog post or some tabloid that got it wrong. So like, as close as you can get to like the primary source, the better. I forget what the saying is, but like stats are different to everyone who reads them, mm -hmm. right? So stats can always be misconstrued as well. So to show people and let them form their own opinions is a good way to maintain like an integral, like sure. idea or foundation. Mm -hmm. So cool. So just like a willingness to learn, basically. Yeah, yeah, you have to. I mean, to be political, you have to be willing to learn, I feel like. Sure. So. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, um, this next question is, I guess, the fun part. Like, what is it, what is it like for y'all being a political streamer? It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wonder, yeah, that probably is, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. At times. Um, I'm kidding. I mean, like I said, I cover... I guess, like, for me, the most heat I got, like, as a political streamer was, like, during the abortion aspect of things. Mm -hmm. uh, my specialty is uh, in women's sexual and reproductive health, so um, talking about, like, access to abortion and the public health implications of it was my, uh, like, it's, it's, like, my thing. Um, so I got shit on a lot for that, um, but I guess overall, I don't know. <laughs> it, it still sucks. The best part is... <laughs> I guess people like see you as a source of like, uh, what the hell's the word? Like information. Yeah. yeah. And they, they, they trust you um, and they trust you to give them the information and also, also like ask questions and stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I think the best part is um, how open everything is. Mm -hmm. So like in a lot of communities, I'm sure you guys know, uh, politics is just something some streamers, they don't talk about. Mm -hmm. They're just like, right. you can be like, hey, did you see that Donald Trump got a manicure? And they'll be like, I don't talk about politics. Yeah. <laughs> I don't talk about it. And like, I get it, I get it. They're looking out for their stream. They understand how polarizing it is. But I do like that in the politics sphere, everyone is so open about their politics. Mm -hmm. It's not like, how do you feel about abortion? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about, you just know, like mm -hmm. people are very open about it, which is really nice. And yeah, that's, that's what I like. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that's the best part about it. The best part for me of being a political streamer as much as like I, I try to like avoid like more and more I'm trying to do bigger stuff because I want to cast a bigger net but is to uh, just realize that I can talk about anything I'm not worried about it I'm not playing a game I'm not making music and having someone bring up some political me being like whoa bro like I don't want to talk I don't want to alienate some people not nah, like now I don't give a shit like I don't I'll alienate you all day yeah. like I don't Carter's a, debate if lord. I, yeah. Carter's a debate lord yeah for sure and so I, I just find it that like it's nice to not have anything off limits and the best part is the community for sure I think yeah. no matter what your pol politics are or what you do politically like you have like some of the coolest audience like mm. they're like kind of I always say like you need a friend to tell you like oh you kind of understand this wrong or you messed up and when you have a political stream don't worry there's like 200 people there to tell you <laughs> yeah that's right so, yeah that's like one of the good parts is having someone having that that friend kind of that will yeah. tell you that you messed up I think uh, to, to piggyback off of that idea like I think the best part uh, is, is the discussions of the community, like specifically. Like I think I really enjoy, like bouncing from topic to topic, 
there's really no way to know whether you're going to spend like 10 minutes or an hour on it. You just like pick a bunch of things to talk about right every day. And then you're like, all right, well, let's see like what everybody has to say about this. And sometimes you'll get into like, you know, uh, a 40, it's, it's the parlance is stun lock, I believe. Yeah. Uh, you'll get into like a 40 minute <laughs> stun lock on like a certain topic. And you're just like, at the end of it, it's like, wow, actually that was, that was pretty refreshing and really interesting to like have some new ideas about this thing. Yeah, those so are the, I, the best days. Yeah, yeah. I, think, that, I yeah. think that's very, like, I'll, I'll have, like, an entire, you know, like, 40 tabs, like, set up, and I'll, like, find myself an hour left to stream and only have, like, you know, uh, I'll, have, I'll still have, like, 20 left because I was, like, deep into one subject for an hour. It's like, oh, actually, that's not bad. I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that part is really cool too. It doesn't, yeah. it's like, it's a grind, but it's also not a grind because, like, it's not like you have to get on and you're like, time to play Apex Legends for the... <laughs> Six thousandth right. time. Okay, right. great. Yeah. I guess it's, um, yeah, the variety. It's, yeah, yeah, you get the to variety, like, yeah. it's kind of yeah. like, oh, what am I going to talk about today? And sometimes it's going to be a slow day, and it's just going to be like, okay, we'll just watch some YouTube videos together. And then other days it's like, oh, okay, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of things to unpack. There's a lot to learn, and that's pretty fun. Yeah, I sound like a broken mm -hmm. record, but it's it's literally being able to like everything's political, right? So I can watch any video. I can go watch a dream video. He was just in here. And be mm -hmm. like, well, what he said there is kind of weird, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, or something like that. That's what I mean. Is everything you can do anything. You're a variety streamer. You just don't hold back. You just say what you believe or mm -hmm. what you believe to be right. Sure. And that speaks to the point too of like growing with your community and your community is growing and learning from you too. So yeah, it's really neat. Um, so what was your goal? Like initial goal? Has your goal changed? What's your goal as a political streamer? Um, my goal was to educate, uh, so a big part of me, uh, while, while I was in grad school, uh, I was in school for public health, and I saw the COVID response to how they were giving information out to the community, and I thought it was wrong. Uh, so at that point, I picked up a health communication uh, certificate, so I would be able to give uh, people the information in a way that's easy for them to digest and learn and be able to essentially give that information to other people. So I just want to make information, especially within the realm of like politics, public health, accessible and digestible. Because politics can be really, really, really overwhelming and heavy. And I feel like you need to like break it down in a way where people are like, okay, like this makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think I'm the same. I, I originally wanted to be a professor. That was like my thing. I wanted to be a college professor. And uh, <laughs> I wanted to teach uh, linguistics. And that's kind of oh, that's cool. an interesting thing that happened. And I like ended up going down this data kind of analysis route. And uh, yeah, educate people because I was learning. I, when I started streaming, I was doing music, which well, I don't know why I was doing that when I was in college. I sh shouldn't have been. <laughs> but I was doing music and I was teaching people how I made music. Like that's what I did. My whole stream was like, me in my you know music software and being like this is why I'm doing this and this is why I'm doing that and then it moved one day I was just like man other people talk about politics why do I have to keep saying like that and yeah I just I was like this should be a tool where we can learn together another thing is obviously like as somebody like I'm a leftist so like I'm like I want to organize like I want to get people out there and realize like together we can do things and that's like a big part of mine is organizing mm -hmm. so I think that's right I mean I just my my goal is really to just have fun uh, first uh, and foremost, like just always, is just to enjoy like the, the stream that's happening and hope that people are having fun. And through that, like I hope that like they also like take some of these things in because I can't really like govern whether or not like someone's gonna adopt like an idea that they like heard on Twitch. But I can know that if I'm facilitating in a way that makes it like so that that idea could be more cohesive because they're hanging around and like having a good time associate that with a positive feeling, then that's kind of it. Like I just, my goal is just to sign on every day and tell jokes and hope that yeah. some of it sticks. Make things light that are really yeah. heavy. Yeah. Like it, there's a lot of, I don't know, it's not a suit we're coming off. We're, we're back at TwitchCon for the first time since 2019, which is kind of weird. Uh, but like, it's kind of evidence that like the last couple of years have not been like super cool or anything. And everybody needs like a, a little like time to kind of cool off and everything. So I think that that's like, always my, my biggest thing that even if we're going to talk about like extremely like heady topics, I can at least like make it where we're going to have a little bit of a, a good time uh, yeah. at the end of the day. You we're know? going to tell jokes at the wrong time. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah <laughs> we're going we're gonna to tell off color jokes. We're going to yeah. like talk mm -hmm. about silly things, you know? Yeah. I think when Somehow. I started, I just wanted to do, um, I, don't, I don't actually remember. I just wanted to talk about politics, I think, because it's always been something that I've been passionate about and wanted mm -hmm. to talk to people about. Mm -hmm. And most people in the real world do not want to talk about politics. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, these people online do? 
sick. I get to talk to them <laughs> about it. Um, and then I think as it like evolved, it became like sort of like how if you go to hang out with your friends and you go to watch a movie together, or like you go like to have a sleepover and you all like watch some reality TV or something. And that's how I want my stream to be. It's yeah. just me and a bunch of people hanging out, reading some articles, watching some videos, learning about stuff. One of the things on here is let's inform, it says over there too. I mm -hmm. think informing is hard because oh, yeah. I, I just want sure. to point that out. Like, there's a difference, I think, between informing and educating. Informing means you're speaking from a place of authority, but mm -hmm. I think as a political streamer, you need to remember you're not an authority. And like, yeah. I think you have to. I think you have with. to focus on what you know. So, like, I trust Rogan to talk about like public yeah, health. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I trust yeah. you to talk about linguistics. Yeah. You know, like I, I have a business degree. I feel comfortable reading financial statements and talking about them. Mm -hmm. But then, like everything else, it's like I don't. I try not to like inform because yeah, I just want right. it to be like a, a place where everyone can learn together. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's cool. Um, so, I know some of you said that you kind of take like a maybe a refresher during stream or you crack jokes. But is it your entire aim, politics, or do you do other things on stream? I think it's all changed for all of us over time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I've. Uh... The more you do it, the less you do it. I don't know how yeah. else to describe it. The more you do politics, if you just cover it 24 7, you're going to burn out. So, like, I find mm -hmm. myself taking days where I just, like, hang out, watch someone yeah. train hop across America or whatever, you know, fun oh, videos yeah. are going on. Yeah. Um, I, I usually do, like, an hour or two before I get, like, Monday through Friday, I do, like, an hour or two of public health news, sometimes less, and I just get mm -hmm. into my normal React content. I think I try to do something similar. I try to get like a couple articles a day and then I try to put in like a couple of light things and then a couple of positive things. Mm. Um, and then I try to do what you were talking about earlier, Carter, about how like everything is political. Like you can watch sometimes stuff or read stuff that isn't political in nature, but you want to make it political because you want to talk about maybe like a specific issue. Mm. So for example, like Dream is not a political content creator but you can talk about dream in a political way. You can talk yeah. about like sand culture and mental health, you know? <laughs> sorry, this is, <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. We're gonna come for sorry, us. Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry. In a positive way, in a, in a good yeah, way. I nice. love dream. I love dream so much. <laughs> I, li I like him a lot, yes. Yeah, I think that, yeah. that's the best way. Like you're, you, uh, you're discussing politics, I guess, <laughs> all stream, yeah. but you're not like, covering the hard news, right? There's a difference. I'm not going down a CNN article being like, these guys are dumb, you know, yeah. all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think you can't take yourself too seriously because then you become like this obnoxious person. Yeah. Like, I'm sure if mm -hmm. you guys have met one person who's just like, you're trying to have a conversation and they're like, you know, that's actually really problematic. Yeah, probably, <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. know, but that's really <laughs> problem. And it's like every conversation is unbelievably heavy. And I think that that's like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they know how to take it light, okay? They know how to not be too stressful, but yeah. I think it's also like while we're while we're talking about like how do you how you aim to like how much time do you aim to use? I think it's uh, important to have like those hard stops too cuz like the nature of streaming is you're always going to have people cycling through. And sometimes when we're in the video phase where I'm just going to like sit around and watch Super Eye Patch we'll talk about Nathan Fielder for an hour. Uh <laughs> somebody's gonna come in they're gonna be like well did you hear about this thing and i'm like i sure did we're gonna talk about it tomorrow at 9 a.m because yeah. we're done talking about politics today yeah i find like if you cover this, uh, this is the thing don't do news in the morning is what i've learned because <laughs> <laughs> that's the real thing yeah if yeah. you do it if you start with news you're gonna get 20 other of the same people going did you know and it's yeah like, oh yeah yeah so you, yeah. you repeat i mean that's like the nature of a streamer everybody here has ever streamed you repeat yourself about a gazillion times mm -hmm. that's oh, what you're yeah. gonna do the thing is like you want to build on it i guess like a lego right like you just keep building up on what you're repeating like if you're if you're gonna repeat yourself you might as well add to it right and throughout the day you might have this big thing that <clears throat> doesn't look very good but at least yeah. you tried so. yeah um cool so i also have here how do you this is an interesting question because you guys said some of you are doing like the news thing like at the very end or in the middle so it doesn't like burn you right you know, out excuse me to burn you out um so how do you frame the topics you cover how do you bring that to your audience usually with whatever's like like i said like whatever they're saying whatever somebody wants to hear about whatever's hot topic twitter whatever and i just frame sure. it in the way of like hopefully come from like a historical standpoint or like a theoretical standpoint and just be like well, what do you guys think like what is this and mm -hmm. I, I think it's the best way like the best way to learn something or educate is to just ask questions like what do you think of this why is this why is this happening why you know oh, yeah. and like ask a lot of 
because people like no one's gonna learn something unless they can solve the problem in their head. Like if you do the puzzle for someone, they you just did the puzzle. Like they didn't do anything. They they sure. you guide their hand. Nothing happens. But if you teach them to, like it's gonna be a lot easier, a lot better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would also say that like I I try <laughs> to keep my streams all in like one topic. So like if I can, that's like the most ideal. That like one stream will be focused on one specific topic, um, and then frame the entire discussion about that. Um, and then besides that, I try to uh, talk about things in the way that you were talking about, like w- just asking questions. And like I try to figure out like w- if there is an issue that's being talked about, what is the harm, and who is being harmed, and how much are they being harmed? Mm-hmm. So like a variety of topics, you can approach it this way, like. Um, the recent legislation from Brandon, from Dark Brandon, about mm-hmm. <laughs> about um, small offenses of marijuana. It's like, okay, well, who is being harmed? Who is being helped? Mm-hmm. And like, it's hard to be against his um, position on this because no one is being harmed. No one. There's just people that are going to get help from this. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, yeah, you always apply a political lens. You yeah. can't help it. <laughs> sure. Like, yeah. there's, you, if you're a political streamer, that's why you're a political streamer, because you sure. always are going to have your bias as to whatever you believe. So. Right. Like, like Denim said. Yeah. It's very, like, it's easy to see the politics and Yeah, there's politics everything. and everything. You can't, you can't help it. You're brain broken. Sure. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. True. Oh, go ahead. I said, no, I said, that's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so, true. so with discussion, right? If you, I'm guessing y'all have, like, discussions and stuff with your chat, and um, how is that? You know, how do you cover um, like arguments or bigger debates? Because um, this, I know that there are some difficult topics to bring up, but I'm sure people ask. You know, so how do you how do you cover that sort of thing when it's a little bit more contentious? Um, contentious things, you just have to go in. You just have to, it, like I said, you have to be willing to know that if it's going to be something that's a really hot topic, you're going to probably correct yourself and you're going to be wrong. But you just got to accept it. You just mm-hmm. go, you say it. It's going to be. Um, something that you get corrected on a hundred times, you know, yeah. or whatever, but you're going to learn, you're, you're going to learn, you're going to move on, or you're not going to learn. And then you'll just have a bad take forever, but that's normal. Like some people do that. Like you have your biases or you have the people, it's really hard to, uh, if you live surrounded by people who have different opinions, but then when you go to stream, your chat is telling you that it's wrong. It, it's still hard even as a streamer, right? Like we have a thousand, like maybe not a thousand, but like a hundred, 200 people telling you like, you know, uh, this is wrong. But then when you go home or go visit your family and they're like, well, actually, this is right. You know, we need to build the wall 20 feet higher. And you're like, no, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, it can be it can be thing. And also, like, I think as a, as a streamer, people who just watch streams don't understand. But like as a streamer, because like, it says continuous discourse uh, mm-hmm. is like I remember pretty much everybody. Like if anybody here watches my stream, like if you've ever said hi in my chat Nobody more than does. once, I probably see, I would know you. Like, Eagle eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just remember it. It's something it, I've replaced, you know, childhood memories with <laughs> chat. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, going to miss that Mega Man 3 play yeah. too, but you know, you're more important than that. So yeah, yeah. yeah you can't help it. it Cause you, especially like there's, sure. there's people in the community who stand out. Like there's people uh, like, I even see people out here that I know that have like added very like to my chat or things like I remember, I'll remember yeah. the conversation. And that's how I keep the discourse going forever. So, yeah, that's right. I, I think also like um, anything that's really contentious, I try to like show up with a game plan to only say like one or two sentences on it, mm-hmm. because the more that you ramble on these topics, the more that it's like, oh well, like you said this thing, oh you, well, you said this thing, yeah. oh well, think about that. Isn't this kind of weird that you said? And like your point was completely valid, but because you added extra sentences, people will feel like you were trying to say something sure. else or something. So anything that's like very contentious, I try to be very, very careful. And I have like my sentences planned out and my essays, paragraphs, all of it ready to go. So that I can just be like, well, my position is that we should do this and this mm-hmm. and this. And I don't think we should be doing this. Because then there's like no room for interpretation. And mm-hmm. if people think you're wrong and you've done your research, there's nothing you can do about those people. Right. Mm-hmm. right. What about you, Morgan? You were the last year or two you've had a lot of contention. <laughs> public, public health is a hard one, right? Yeah. So. Um, I, I it sounds so bad, but like it gets to a point where I'm just like, you know what? Fuck you. If you don't believe what I'm gonna say, like that's yeah. that's on you because, like obviously with like uh, the vaccine, the masks, uh, a lot of people are like, mm-hmm. it's like propaganda like is so embedded into their brain. It's just like they're so brain rotten. You can't get to these people, so I'm just like, oh yeah. I think you have to pick and choose your battles. Yeah. Like, I like to have I think fun we with can... those people. Yeah, same. I, I, <laughs> no, I have low tolerance for like people like that. I know I shouldn't, but like, I just have very low tolerance. Uh, like, but like I said before, like, 
with these topics and discourse, I, I use data to back my points. So while these people, like, or while people are like kind of weird about the topic, like I know I'm giving the information in the best way possible because I have data from scientists that research this and they're experts in this field mm -hmm. to back up my points. Mm -hmm. sure. so you, you, you do it and then just move on, right? Yeah. 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 I think the most important thing about covering contentious discourse is having the hottest take you can in your topic. Yeah. That's I, I think you're really the same well. as me, though, right? Yeah, we we yeah, feed, yeah. like having a contentious chatter, someone that does, disagrees yeah. with you is, is a benefit, right? Yeah, it's a, that's it's a teaching funny. moment, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, that's going to be like content. Yeah, let someone, them know that. Yeah. Someone comes in, <laughs> you know, in your stream, usually from Alberta, I don't know why, but they all come from Alberta. Yeah. And they always tell me, now the vaccine, it's making me grow a third arm. It's like, no, it's not. No, like, it's, not. it's really no, not. It's really not. not. And then, yeah. But then you're stun locked. That's a good stream, right? Those, oh, yeah. those chatters fun, yeah. are I think the, the best example is like the voter fraud stuff where people just were like uploading clips of like, like a blurry oh, like yeah. shot and yeah. it's like they someone lighting Sasquatch. like a yeah. ballot and it's yeah. like, look, voter fraud is real. And it's like, what is the source of this video? Like, yeah, this yeah. person just printed a piece of paper and burned it. Like, yeah. I don't, what are you talking yeah. about? So I think like, some things you just have to like move on and just accept that sure. there are people who are I can't do that. I get one guy yeah. way too yeah. much. Carter, oh, like, stun locks on the one I think, person. Okay, listen. Staff. Yeah, I get one guide a lot. It's all right. And I people think in my chat too, like whenever we're talking, somebody like comes at me and he's like, Okay, I had to have your chat open too. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's and true. Your chat. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> you got some like on my chat the other day. It was good. Okay. Uh, I think another aspect of contentious discourse to, to kind of close it out is um, it depends on your community as well. Like, we can talk about that one guy or whatever that will pop in a chat and, you know, you can make content out of them. But also, like, I found, like, in the past three years that my community's, like, grown a lot in the way of discourse. Like, before it was, like, herding cats and mm -hmm. trying to get people to stop. <laughs> getting each other's throats. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like since, you know, I first started, like a lot of people have really grown in the way that they handle things. So if like you're interested sure. in getting politics streams, like no, like it's kind of choppy waters, uh, getting people to switch over from, to a mindset of just like having conversational di uh, mm -hmm. dialogue versus like having confrontational dialogue. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, um, you know, like it, it, it changes over time. And I think like that's one of the biggest parts of like contentious discourse is just, sure. Having yeah. people that are ready to have a more like you know nuanced conversation about things. Yeah, if I could build on that for like half a second, I think the other thing too is like there are topics that you know like there are some people that like once they're past a certain point, you really can't help them. Like they're yeah. really out there. Yeah. But I think that there's like a good middle ground where some people who are just like they're like they're not sure about a lot of topics. Like yeah. they just mm -hmm. don't know enough. And I mean like I try to tell my chat like hey like if you see people like this, don't just like be mean and be rude and like kick these people out. Cause like, if you ever have an opportunity in a private sphere to like push someone um, in a political direction that you feel like causes less harm, you should, you should be able to do that. You should be able to have a conversation with that person. Mm -hmm. And like there, as a streamer, it's kind of hard to do that for like one specific chatter. Yeah. Um, but your chat can help them. Like you can have a community and you can build a community of people who will have a conversation with someone mm -hmm. um, who's maybe just like confused or they just don't know enough about the topic. Mm -hmm. It's a personal question. Would you all say you're able to identify someone who's just looking to argue with you as opposed to someone who's just looking to argue with you? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I use twitchfollowing.com. Yeah. It's great. It's yep. fun. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can live audit people and find out if they're yeah. just like following people who have arguments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going away, but, you know, that was a fun time while it lasted. No, you can normally <laughs> tell, like, just by, um, you can tell, there, there's a couple of things. You can tell, like, by sentence syntax, like, people that are returning, like, fan evaders and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You can also tell people that are approaching it from a very, like, the way that people frame their sentences, whether or not they're just, like, approaching it in a way that's frivolous and waste, time wasting. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, yeah, m most of the time, like, uh, I've also, I don't know, been on the internet since like IRC, like QuakeNet. So yeah. like, I've paid attention to people's like sentence structure for like decades at this point. I mean, so. these just tell us when you've like moved on from a subject and someone yeah, comes yeah, in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like just trying right, to push. You're buttons. actually wrong an hour and a half ago yeah. on a yeah. brand new account. Yeah, you're talking yeah, 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 about yeah, like absolutely. some. You're just like talking about gummy bears, and they're like, "Did you know that you're still wrong about this?" It's like, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. man. All right. <laughs> Nothing we can do for you. Yeah, it's terminal. <laughs> Well, if uh, y'all don't have anything else you want to cover, we can open it up to some audience Q&A. Uh, I believe there's two working microphones on either side here, so if you guys have some questions, yeah. we're cool. here. Thanks for a great panel. Um, I was curious, I have, hearing you now have some thoughts, but I'm wondering how you think the work you're doing with political talk 
compares to what happens in traditional media. And when you started, I was thinking about political talk shows, but by the end, I was thinking about talk radio and open lines. So I, sure. I just would be curious if, what you think in comparison with traditional media. That's how I describe it to my grandparents. Yep. Oh, I, oh, I, yeah. think, I think this is very, the, so there was a guy, uh, he's the, the first talk radio show, uh, show host was actually a former Marine. And uh, he started like talk shows by having like people call in and putting it up to the speaker, right? And now we're at the point where like you can interact with someone in real time uh, in chat, where you like literally like, like talking to them with a slight delay. And, but I think those things very uh, carry very like similar traits, right? Because like people are calling in or in this case chatting because they want like your real time like idea on this. Uh, so it's very different from like just prepared media statements that you would see on like a CNN or something. I think it's much more like just a call and talk radio show. You know? Oh yeah, it's it's way more casual for sure. Like, it's mm -hmm. not like, this is someone who's here to tell you about stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is someone who's here to talk, to chat, that will read what you have to say, that will answer the questions that you have. Um, and I feel like that's a, in my opinion, I like the format better. That's how I describe it. My grandparents, like, you're trying to describe what Twitch is. They're like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, so, honestly, at this point, when my parents just ask, I'm just like, you know CNN? And they're like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's like that. Uh, you're like, I, oh, okay, okay, good, yeah. good, good. I, I say it's like radio because I, I don't know about you guys, but Twitch lives on my second monitor. I never like, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not an active watcher most of the time. And so it, I treat it like that. It's like a, it's yeah. like a, a radio show background. where I can pop it up if I need mm -hmm. to, to see what's going on. Like yeah. if I need to be visually, I can be the option that's there. But Twitch is more of a listening tool. I think it's different, obviously, like the further you get out of the just chatting sphere and more you get into like a uh, gaming sphere. But Definitely, like, just chatting or, like, very chill games. I think a lot of people just have it on for noise. Like, I fall asleep yeah. to Twitch streams. It's just, like, I've I done that I think also, for me yeah. too. There's, like, one more <laughs> yeah. aspect, too, that's, like, um, generally speaking, like, most news networks know their audience, and then they just go for that audience. Mm -hmm. So Fox knows their audience. They're not going to do things that are not for their audience. CNN knows their audience. They're not going to do things that are not for their audience. Whereas, like, Twitch streams, it's, like, anyone can come join. Anyone can talk. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be from any political affiliation to join any streamer's chat to do anything. Like, mm -hmm. you can talk to them and ask them all the questions that, like, maybe you would have wanted to ask, like, an anchor that you can't. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. Hello. Uh, got a question, of, I guess, for all of you. So the revenue split started a, uh, a pretty contentious debate among streamers and how the platform takes value from streamers work mm -hmm. and what they do and that has led to conversations about streamers unionizing uh -huh. so i'm curious what you all think about the possibility of that and i guess to tie it into the theme of the panel how the community factors into a union push on twitch it's impossible yeah, yeah. i was gonna say i, I wish it was possible. i think i think the only way it's possible is like if most of the big streamers on the platform like 90% of the big streamers on the platform came together and were like, hey, we want to improve conditions for everyone. Otherwise, it's, it's, it would be really hard to organize, like really, really hard. I still even, um, I still even I, Well, I would put a caveat on that because that's true, uh, but I, uh, one of the biggest parts that I talk about when we talk about unionization, first, obviously, there's the idea that we're all independent contractors, yeah. which is a, a very like, big conversation to have in and of itself with regards to unionization. It's literally made to make it so that workers can't unionize and have collective bargaining power. Uh, but there's also the fact that like streamers are not the only component to Twitch, which is really hard to deal with when you talk about the idea of unionizing, because you would also have to have something, uh, not like a chatter's union, but at least like a collective that would like be governing. Actor, actors Guild. Right, like an Actors yeah. Guild. Like you would have to like have to have someone that would reach out and coordinate like strikes uh, alongside like chatters also deciding to like black out the platform, which would take an immense amount of governing. I'm not saying it's not possible. It's just like there's a lot of roadblocks in the way of streamers like actively unionizing. Uh, somebody would you would probably have to have an existing union like SAG-AFTRA that would uh, open up like for uh, negotiations and try to like start onboarding on streamers. But yeah, it's I'm, it's tough. I stand yeah. by it's impossible. I yeah. think <laughs> I've been on Twitch for 11 years before it was called Twitch. And uh, one thing you notice at Twitch is Twitch grows, streamers don't. That's, that's a, unless you come from an outside audience, like, yeah. uh, not to bring back the thing, but like Dream. If Dream streams, <laughs> or if Carl streams, or any of those guys, they have a YouTube audience. And I think they're mm -hmm. a really good example. They come to Twitch, they stream once a week, and they get a zillion viewers. Um, whereas people like myself, or, or like uh, other bigger streamers, um, 
when they stream on Twitch, they're getting Twitch viewers. They're not getting outsiders. Yeah. These are people that found Twitch, not the streamer. Or maybe they did find a streamer, but then they just stay within the ecosystem. And the, the downfall of that is if streamers are to unionize and go on a strike, it would just, they would just go to the next person in line. Mm, it's a yeah. snowball effect, and everyone yeah. knows Twitch or is extremely Or they just don't popular. log in, which is uh, another yeah. discussion in of itself. So like, the only way would be like some form of guild, and then it would have to be required, which I'm not exactly mm -hmm. a fan of, but yeah, it would have to be like some sort of streamer guild, or like as a musician, you sign up for, it's called yes. ASCAP or BMI, mm -hmm. and you just register as kind of like a protected artist, mm -hmm. so. Thank you for your question. Let's go ahead and get the gentleman. Um, so another question about organizing. I know you mentioned, Carter, that um, that's one of your big strives to have a community that will do that outside of Twitch. So I was wondering, how would you ideally want um, political advocacy to be pushed into the viewers' lives by your stream? Um, the best thing is to like find ways to be organized, right? Like talk mm -hmm. about like your DSA or talk about like your work, like everyone probably like in your chat probably has some form of a job, right? Mm -hmm. I find that Twitch, we have like a big disproportion, obviously of like tech people and yeah. in tech, there's a massive lack of unionization because um, not that they're fairly compensated, but they're more fairly compensated than the average worker. So it's very hard to like generate the steam to go and get organized. Mm -hmm. But um, that's, that's mainly it. Find like talk to your, you know, whoever you can at your job or like your workers just don't get fired, right? Like you gotta kind of be a little under yeah. the radar, but you know, talk about unionizing. And like we have seen effects, like there has people that have literally been streamers who led to like Starbucks getting unionized or Chipotle is getting unionized. Oh yeah, I think I participated in, um, it was a fundraiser for a university. Um, it's like students who work as like uh, TAs. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't Columbia, I, I believe. I think it was Columbia. Um, and I hosted, well I didn't host, I, I helped host a fundraising stream and they actually were able to unionize. So it's like you get to use your platform to give more attention, to give more traction, and to help finance like a lot of these goals, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. I think just learning those, uh, learning these behaviors is really important as well, because obviously, uh, a lot of our viewership are other like leftists. Which I don't know if you've tried to like organize like leftists, like cats in a bag. You know, people have like different ideas, um, but like just understanding those structures, whether you like them or not. You mentioned DSA, uh, things like IWW, or at least mm -hmm. like chapters of like uh, um, organized, um, you know, uh, discussion places within your um, community, whether or not like they're effective or whether or not they're still gonna be able to give you like these, uh, these things that you can build off of, right? So whether or not you like agree with like these blocks that are available to you, like finding and seeking out that information in, uh, in real life is integral. Because like we can only like talk about things on stream for so many, uh, you know, I don't have the apparatus of like the, uh, the DSA or anything like that. We only talk about it for so long, but if you go to like a DSA chapter or like you know, food not bombs, and you like actually sit alongside and learn how to use some of these behaviors, I think that's like, I mean, you know, uh, massively integral to to building things mm -hmm. outside of just the online space. Let's go ahead and take a question up here. Hello, love you, Krogan. Um, <laughs> so in anthropology, one of the cores is that culture is the glue that holds society together. Um, and when you start learning about anthropology, you start realizing things like, wow, just using a fork is something that I learned through my experience here in whatever life that I've lived. Earlier in the panel, you guys were talking about how politics is everything. You can mm -hmm. look through anything through the political lens once you start getting into politics. And there are people that say things like, and just normies, you're not even in the Twitch sphere, but who say, you know, um, I don't like getting political. I don't want to talk about politics. Um, I don't, I'm not into politics. I don't like politics. Politics doesn't affect me. And it does. It affects everyone because it is literally everything, right? So in the sense of anthropology where culture is so important and it's based on, you know, society and whatever, it's pretty obvious to, well, I think me and obviously I could be wrong, but that politics actually creates culture itself mm -hmm. and anti-culture, that it's like kind of in between, right? Um, how do you, in your uh, normie lives with people that you know, how do you show people or, or kind of talk to people who do say, you know, politics doesn't affect me? How do you personally connect with people and try to show them or how could you give us advice on how to talk to people in our lives who don't think politics is important when, you know, from our perspective, it's everything? 
um, to get them maybe even just curious about it and possibly into activism one way or the other, it doesn't matter left or right, just more of an understanding of politics and how it does affect them and you know, kind of opening that door. Like, how, 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 what advice do you have? Ask um, questions. That's just ask them questions that are yeah. obvious. Run, run them through logic <laughs> circles, honestly. That's the best way, right? Yeah. Um, ask someone a question and just be like, well, does this just affect you? There's policy about it. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, you care about politics. You just say you don't. Mm -hmm. right? That's the biggest thing. It's like, you care about this? Yeah, okay, you care about politics. And that's um, it. Yeah. Yeah, asking I questions. I'm going to be honest. I usually just like focus on something that I know personally affects that person. Mm -hmm. And usually it's wages because everybody yeah. gets paid because everybody has to get paid. Um, whether that's like getting paid from a job or a disability check or whatever. Um, that <clears throat> is like the income that you need to survive. And I think because it's so, people are willing to talk about it usually, you can usually be a little sneaky and be like, okay, well like, well how do you feel about the fact that you don't get to be in a union? Or like, how do you feel about the fact that like this or whatever, like what mm -hmm. he was saying, ask questions and stuff. And then I think at the end of that discussion, if you can see that they've like been interested in having the conversation, I think you can sneak in like a little, see, it's not so bad to talk about politics. It's, it's fine, it's just, it's literally all in our lives. So that's what I try to do. Like obviously it's different for each person and what each person struggles with the most in life. Um, but that's, that's my personal opinion. Thank you. Well, let's go ahead and take this question. All right. Hey, guys. Um, just want to say I'm a fan of all of your uh, streams and communities. Um, so I guess the question for sort of everyone, I, it was mostly I was thinking of Carter, but I, to everyone, um, how do you, um, when you get into political streaming, because I'm assuming most of you didn't start off like right out the gate, like wanting to just talk politics with like everyone, like you sort of ease into like that, that sort of workflow. In Carter's case, it's music, which is something that I and also doing some sort of thing of it from that frame. How do you, um, I guess, and not to sound like putting you guys against each other, but like, is it sort of like a whole pie of Twitch, people that are into like political Twitch streamers that you're like trying to vie for the attention? Like, I, I guess I'm just trying to think, how do you perceive it as um, like the Twitch viewer base of people that want to tune in for politics? Because there are, you know, just like any category, there's all sorts of streamers uh, doing that. Um, but I think different from other categories like, uh, you know, just general chatting or gaming or things like that, it's more of a, like, there are like personalities associated with it as opposed to just sort of like community and like, oh, I really like this particular community over this one. So I guess, how do you sort of view it in that sense of like the political viewership and how do you work with that? So I think we messed up because all, like, other than Frogan, the three of us all do morning political streams. So we're uh -huh. really sharing that pie <laughs> as much as possible. I stream twice a day. But yeah. I think, um, that's true. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I think you just have to focus on like how you cover it. So like for me, it's mm -hmm. like, I don't take it seriously. Like if there's a serious topic, we'll talk about it seriously. But if uh, other than that, like, I just want to like lose it. I just want to have fun. I just want to enjoy myself. Like, I don't want to end my stream being like, well, life sucks, you know? Yeah. And I think that's the only way, like, I mean, that's kind of how other streamers do it too. Like all the streamers that are sharing like the, the pie for Fortnite, like they just have to find like what is special about them as a person. Right. Um, and I think that's what we kind of do. I think it's unique in the yeah. political yep. section because uh, the people who are into it literally just, like they watch all of us at the same time. Mm -hmm. Most people I know will come into my chat and be like, did you just hear what Denim People said? Multi -stream. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. I didn't, but thanks for telling me. Yeah. It's, but yeah. Uh, Sometimes we do things and then ask people to go clip them in like Denim Stream yeah. or something. It's yeah, weird. It's, um, uh, it's definitely, it's, it's the same thing like you said, like personalities in gaming yeah. or whatever. It, it's the same in politics. We're yep. gaming. It's, it's, we all have our own personality. We all have our own way of covering it. But people don't like that. People don't like gamers. It's the same thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's just personality. I think yeah. I think I used to think of it the the way that you're talking about where like there's a pie and so many people can share it but like over the years I think I've really understood it as just like this is Twitch right so like you can say like well this is only this is a very specific niche but that doesn't like I've I've gone into other people's chats and seen like wholly different like chatters that exist like uh, there is shared community as well there's a lot of like just wholly new people that are coming to politics for the first time and I think that's oh, yeah. because there is uh, something unique that every different streamer like brings to the idea of this and that's just writ large throughout twitch right so 
I, I think it's like kind of uh, it's a it's a more updated mindset to say like well you know obviously like there's only so many politics viewers that can go around because there's not like there's new people coming yeah. to the, the the platform every day through watching other people's TikToks etc cetera, etc cetera. and that will just kind of like continue to cycle around the sphere so like thinking about like how many people are going to view you is just like thinking about more uh, the idea of Twitch itself, right? Like how that's just going to work. I think we have time for a couple more questions. Go ahead, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, yeah, I actually run a counseling center in Arizona and I'm extremely interested in bringing LSS, uh, LCSWs and counselors onto Twitch to talk about things that might help people get over their mindset around politics mm -hmm. and what stops them from getting to that extra level of maybe understanding that keeps them from that barrier. So I was wondering if you had any opinions, suggestions, recommendation, advice that you would say for somebody who wants to introduce to that kind of person on the platform that doesn't seem to really have a whole lot of that going on right now. That's hard. It's hard to like, to, politics, like to get a deep interest is you have to want to learn. It's like anything. Yeah. It's like, uh, I'm a non-traditional student. So I went back to college when I was older, I was like 23. And I just like one day was like, I kind of want to get my degree. And I just decided to go into a bunch of debt and be in more debt, <laughs> so, a, paper, a piece of paper that yeah. I won't ever use. Yeah. It's a cool piece of paper. Though. Yeah, it's just yeah. something you have to want. I think that's the biggest thing is you just have to find people who have like that. It, all it takes is an, an inch though, because then you mm -hmm. can take a mile, right? Once they have, every political thing is connected, right? Like we were talking about abortion or whatever. That's going to be connected to other things. Why is it this way, right? Is it like because of like gerrymandering? Is it because of like why is our government like you know these people win way more votes yet don't have as equal representation? Like what's mm -hmm. going on? And it'll just pull. You just pull on that thread until somebody unfortunately becomes a doomer and hates everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead over here. Hi, a uh, great panel. I'm curious about y'all's opinion on the actual politics category on Twitch. Mm -hmm. All you know. Affirmed politics streamers, as we can don't see. Stream there. Don't yeah. stream there. Don't, don't use it. Don't use it. Uh, I, what, I, what, how do we group a, it? What do, like, it's, it's a black hole. Yeah. It's a black hole. Yeah, but, there's, yeah. A, there's a good time on Twitch. Uh, uh, Twitch says this a lot, um, where there's like a really popular tag, and they're like, wow, this is so popular, it should become a thing. And it happened with IRL, and that exploded, right? Like, just chatting is a huge thing. But then a subsection of that was politics, and there are a lot of people that were using the politics tag to great effect because they were able to stream in just chatting, but also say, hey, I'm doing politics. And then Twitch was like, well, maybe people will just like want to stream in politics. And it's like, well, no, that's not where visibility is. Like, you can't car carve a niche out of a niche. Mm -hmm. So you can stream in the politics category, and you will be alongside like a lot of uh, different conservative streams that are trying to sell like Alex Jones Defense Force. But it's not like, it's. I it's not yeah. a great, like, no, nobody, like, none of the largest politics streamers stream there. So if you see that, you should probably, like, think to yourself, oh, okay, well, this probably isn't going to work. What it's a good way, mean? it's a good way to get started, I should yeah, say. Yeah, sure. Because, like, music is like that. The music category on Twitch is all tight-knit. We all know each other. Everybody who's a music streamer, that's, like, how I got started. I got my core audience. And then when I went to, to political stuff, like, those people just came with me, and it gave me that little bit of boost. And politics is the same. Like, I, I know... Like if you stream in politics, you're probably going to get like more viewers than the average person. You're not going to be stuck at that one to five. You're going to yeah. probably get 20. So you're just you're just probably going to get 20, yeah. right? And then once you get those people to follow you for being you, then, then you can jump out. Also, yeah. just really quick, I just think that like most people don't even know that they want to talk about politics yeah. because they think it's a really yeah. daunting topic that they'll never be able to talk about. Right. Um, and... I think once you show people like, no, 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 like you're going to want to talk about it. It's interesting. You have opinions. You just don't know that you have opinions that you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, that's why it's good to keep your stream sort of general in the just chatting category. Cause you can always bring people in people who otherwise maybe are like, oh, I never thought I would enjoy like a politics stream. But mm -hmm. if you're in the politics category, you're never going to see those people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, we have time for one more question right over here. Okay. So something that I've noticed about how all of you uh, cover politics in general is chat interaction, mm -hmm. like bouncing off the chat. So I'm I'm like a 20 viewer, Andy, mm -hmm. and chat interaction at 20 viewers it's it's not <laughs> it's not the biggest, but you can have all the specialized knowledge in the world, but if the chat isn't reactive, how do you how do you talk about politics? How do you how do you cover something? I don't know about you guys, but. That started with me by finding something specific and just watch, like talking about that. I remember yeah. I, I found 60 Days In, which is a show about people in jail. And I would just sit there and watch that and talk about like 
the, the prison system. Like, I don't know, I'd just get into it. I didn't care if I was talking to anybody. I'm, I'm there anyways. I'm just going to talk about it. It was just fun. Like, that's I mean, something I enjoyed. Yeah. And, and that's something you'll, you'll like, notice is if you're watching, like, videos on stream, uh, chat's a lot more quiet. The, the reason that we have, like, chat interaction is normally because we're talking about articles and things of that nature. Once you switch, like, video content, it becomes a lot easier to interact with, like, react to the video that you're watching mm -hmm. and also, like, you know, answer, like, people's questions if they do pop up in chat, like, talking about it. So it's, it's all about, like, finding a balance between, like, what you're trying to do there. Like, think about, like, or read, like, just straight up reading articles. Like, people will sit down while you're, like, reading through a thing and uh, wait till you get to the end for the resolution of it. Like, things like that and just stretching out content a little bit whilst you don't have like people in chat, I think is really important. Also, yeah. I would say um, like pick things you like to talk about. So I took a year off from streaming to get my bachelor's degree. And when I came back, like the month before I came back, I realized I was like watching videos and I was like pausing them by myself, which was very sad. And I would be very angry, be like, this is so stupid, this is so dumb, or like whatever. And I realized I was just, I just wanted to talk about that stuff a mm -hmm. lot. Like it didn't matter if anyone else, if I was just talking into the ether, like it didn't matter to me at all. The other thing I would suggest would be like trying to build a community so that you can have that chat engagement. And the way that I would say that is like two things. First, try and watch your stream. Like go to your VOD, yes. go, click a random place in your VOD, watch for, I would say 30 seconds to two minutes. Cause that's like the average viewer. That's how mm. long they're going to check your stream. And if you get bored and you feel like you want to go watch a different streamer, you can try and figure out what exactly in your stream bored yourself. Yeah, and then try and work on that. Like, try and make every stream second exciting. And if that means, like, cutting back the hours to make every single minute count, then that's what you should do. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing I would say would be, like, a lot of big streamers and a lot of streamers in general are very open to collabing if the idea is something that's interesting and exciting. It's just people don't want to collab if it's like, hey, can I get on your stream? It's like, yeah. nobody wants to hear that. Like, nobody. But if you approach someone, you're like, I'm doing this really, really cool thing. We're going to do this, 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 this. And it seems really cool. People will sign up. People will be interested. So I think that would be my advice. I don't, don't watch your VODs. You're... <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I, ha I hate my own voice. If I, if I watch fair. my VOD, I'm like, nope. Mm -mm. Also an extension of watching your VODs. Watch, uh, if people are making clips of you, watch your clips. Yeah, too. clips is different. Yeah, I watch It's important them. to know like, why people clip things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and it shows yeah. what like, your audience really likes and yep. what they respond to and what, what they, they don't what respond they to. Engage with. One, one more thing, too, is like, if you have 20 viewers, realize that most of those, pe those people are there. They're just not chatting. Most of Twitch, so if you have over 100 people there, there's only going to be like 20 people chatting. Yep. Because it's most people on Twitch, like I said, second monitor, on their phone, just listening. Most mm -hmm. people aren't chatters. Like, go to the biggest streamer on Twitch, go to XQC's chat, right? Mm -hmm. And chat looks like it's flying. But I bet you it's like 5,000 people. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's the He has 100,000. 100, yeah, it's not. Like it's actual a, active chatters versus people Yeah, actually, active chatters yeah. is a super low brain broken people like us. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for your question. And I think we are out of time. Yeah. Um, but thank you so thank much you for guys. your insight and advice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. thank you so much for coming. Sorry about going over time. Oh, not at all.